Hey guys, my name is Ich. I've been a sports videographer for over 15 years and today we're in my edit suite to talk about a topic that's come up quite a lot in the sports videography Facebook group that I run called Sports Videography Community. That's right, today we're talking export settings. I'm literally gonna go through every little setting that you need to change and tell you exactly what to change them to so that you can create the exact same export preset that I use for more than 90% of my videos. So let's go. Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty of export settings, I wanna talk about a couple things. The first one is my merch. There is no funnier but yet clearer way to tell a ref to get the hell out of your way than by wearing one of my beautiful t-shirts or hoodies. So click the link in the description below to visit my store and get one for yourself in your favorite color. The second thing I want to talk about is expectations. A lot of people see high quality videos on YouTube and automatically wonder how come their own videos don't look as good even though they're using a mirrorless camera that they bought less than a year ago. And often that leads them to the conclusion that if the camera is not the problem, then it must be the export settings. But the reality is that there's several reasons why some videos look better than others. First of all, just because a camera came out recently, it doesn't automatically mean that it produces the greatest quality content. A lot of cameras are built specifically to appeal to people who prioritize budget over quality, and if that's the camera you got, then that's the quality you got. Also, lenses make a huge difference. A high quality glass, which is typically more expensive, will give you a much cleaner and much sharper image than a kit lens, for example. And lastly, if you're uploading videos to YouTube, Facebook or Instagram, keep in mind that they'll apply their own exporting process to your videos, where in a nutshell, they'll take the video you uploaded, um, apply their own compression settings and then put that new video online and delete the original one that you uploaded. So the video that you'll end up seeing online will never look exactly the same as the one on your computer. Okay, now that we've managed expectations and that you guys have a better idea of how video quality actually works, let's get on the computer. And as usual, I'll be using Premiere Pro, but if you're using Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve or Filmora, for example, some things might vary, but the terminology will be identical. So as long as you understand the process of what I'm doing, you should easily be able to replicate it on any platform. And don't forget that I'm focusing only on 1080p today because that's what most of us are using. But let me know in the comments if you'd like me to go through my 4K exporting settings. And if there's enough interest, I might do a follow-up video specific to 4K. All right, we're in Premiere Pro. I've got this sequence here of an interview done uh, with a soccer player during their recovery training at the beach, because that's how we do it in Australia. But anyway, let's open the export window, and here we are. First of all, you should always start by looking here at the bottom to confirm that you are exporting the portion of your timeline that you do want to export. In my case, it's the entire sequence, so that's perfect. But if you wanted, you could decide to export only a certain portion of it by simply adding an in and an out, which you can also do on your timeline before opening this window. Then, if we look at the export settings here at the top, you definitely don't want to tick that first box, because if you do, Premiere gives your export the exact same settings as your sequence and grays out every single customization option. That's obviously not what we want, so let's leave it blank. Format, you want to stick to H.264. Presets, um, look at it this way. Using the Facebook or Twitter or YouTube presets in Premiere 
is exactly like using the chicken or popcorn presets on your microwave. Who does that? Seriously. Instead, we're gonna build our own preset. So let's start here by giving our file a name and decide where we're gonna save it. Of course, make sure that both export video and export audio are ticked, otherwise you'll be missing one or the other. And this summary right here is a great thing to read at the very end because it shows you exactly what changes you've made. A bit like the last checkout page on Amazon. So here we got effects, video, audio, multiplexer, captions, and publish. The great news is the only two tabs we need to look at are audio and video. So let's look at audio first because it's extremely straightforward. You pretty much want everything the way it is right now. Audio codec is AAC, sample rate is 48 kilohertz, which should match the sample rate from your camera, channels stereo of course, audio quality high, bitrate 320, and precedence to bitrate. Now, in video, the idea is to stay as close as possible to the settings of your sequence and your footage. So that's why it's good to start by clicking the match source button at the top so that everything is exactly the same as your source and then we can untick the settings that we really want to change. And to be clear, all of these are things that should always be decided before you start editing. So if your plan is to export a video in 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080, you should create a sequence that size at the very start. Same goes for your frame rate, your field order, and your aspect ratio. So we're gonna leave all of them ticked and add one more tick right here next to render at maximum depth, because it definitely sounds like the right thing to do. But in a nutshell, ticking this box will add more time to your export, but it will also give you better colors. Now, if we move on to the encoding settings, first off, we have performance, which allows you to choose between hardware encoding and software encoding, which will give you the same results at the end, but hardware encoding means that it will use some of the hardware from your computer to make the export process much faster. Which sounds great, but we'll still pick software encoding for now, and I will show you later why that is. When it comes to profile and level, it refers to the encoding process of the H.264 codec, and it basically allows you to do it a certain way if your video is meant to be played on an older or weaker machine, and in a different way if it's gonna end up on a more recent or powerful one. It's much more complicated than that, but that's the short version for today. So here, the profile you wanna select high, and for level, let's select 4.2. After that, we can scroll by a bunch of grayed out options and move on to the bitrate settings. Here we're gonna select VBR 2-pass because it is the best combination of quality and size. VBR stands for variable bitrate and it basically scans your entire video and adjusts the bitrate depending on what's going on in your footage. The more detail there is, the higher the bitrate. And typically, in a sports video, there's a lot of camera movements, a lot of people running around, different textures on the ground and in the background, and all that together is basically a big detail party. So that's why you want to use the 2-pass, which takes twice as long as the 1-pass, but does a much better job at assessing all the details in your footage and distributing the variable bitrate accordingly. So in terms of numbers, I set the target bitrate to 15 megabits per second and the maximum bitrate to 50 megabits per second, which in my opinion is the sweet spot when it comes to quality versus file size. By the way, remember earlier when we picked software encoding over hardware encoding? Well, here's why. Once I select VBR 2-pass encoding, watch what happens if I try to use hardware encoding. Obviously, this is something that has to do with my computer configuration, and it might not happen to you, especially if you have a better graphics card than I do. But this video is about my export settings, so this is how I do it with what I've got. Anyway, at this point, we are pretty much done. The only thing left to do is to tick Use Maximum Render Quality, which, again, will make the render time slightly longer, but will also help with the quality. 
I also want to mention a quick side note specific to Premiere Pro users before we wrap this up. Um, a lot of people have experienced uh, problems when they export their videos, they tend to look a little bit more desaturated with a bit less contrast than the video looked originally while they were still in Premiere. And um, I've experienced it myself. There is a way around it um, and I'm not an expert on this, so that's why I didn't really want to fully include this in my video, but I will put a link in the description below to another YouTuber by the name of Matt Johnson. He has a video about it, which is very well done and explains it very well. And there's even a link to, because this whole technique uh, includes using a LUT. So he has the LUT in the description of his video that you can use and shows you how to use it. So yeah, just watch Matt's video and you'll get it. Um, I'm just I'm just not a hundred percent sure that this situation is a one size fits all type of scenario. So that's why I was a bit hesitant to sort of include it in the video. But basically, the link is there. Do as you wish with it. Anyway, as far as we're concerned regarding our export settings, we are now done. So all there is left to do is to save them as a preset. Let's call it 1080p output. And from now on, it will always be available at the top of the preset list every time you export a video in H.264. So once again, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a 4K version of the same video. Otherwise, as usual, thank you for watching. My name is E and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.